Hello, in this video I'm going to tell you how to install an electric power steering pump to a Mark III Supra. Now to do this kind of project, naturally what you're going to need is the uh, power steering pump itself. This is a Volvo unit. I'm going to post this uh, spare part number down below. These are really cheap. I bought this from a junkyard at 45 euros and uh, I've already bought two of these previously and installed them to another cars. These are really easy to get and uh, then what you're gonna need to do this kind of thing is some uh, return line that can handle some kind of oil and a small pressure. This one is rated up to 16 bars. It doesn't have to handle that kind of pressure but it doesn't harm either. It's a 10 millimeter hose and then you're going to need the clamps for it naturally also. Then what you're going to need, which is the most critical part of this whole assembly, is the uh, high pressure line with hydraulic banjo fittings in both ends. Now these are uh, M16 by one and a half millimeter banjo fittings and the line itself can handle up to 300 bars. Now the pump itself can ha can produce only 110 bars, but uh, like I said, it doesn't harm that the uh, the line itself can handle much more pressure. This can go up to 100 degrees Celsius also in heat, which is not going to be a problem with this kind of pump. Then you're going to need the seals naturally for the banjo fittings and the bolts. Then finally some electrical wiring and that's it. So the first thing that you're gonna do naturally I have this whole side of the engine bay disassembled now to show you how, how to do all this so that the intake manifold and everything is not in the way. I can show you here pretty freely what is up. Now here on the steering rack you find two banjo fittings uh, regularly when you still have the power steering lines in. This is the return line and this is the uh, pressure line. Now this pressure line fitting is already M16 by one and a half millimeters and this return line is something mysterious which I couldn't figure out it's something like M17 by one by one and a half or something so you're, you're gonna use this original uh, bolt from here and the original uh, tubing the the front the first phase of this original tubing for the uh, return line because it's already uh, steel tubing for this uh, returning but this bolt you're gonna this bolt you're gonna put a new one and you're gonna fit your hydraulic pressure line naturally there and this you're gonna use the original part and connect it to the uh, 10 millimeter hose and route them wherever you want to route the uh, or place the pump now my style previously has been to always route the uh, pressure lines and the return lines from under the car to the trunk and this is exactly the same idea with this car which I'm gonna do. So now when it comes to the power steering pump itself these are the same exact fittings as they are on the rack with the Mark III Supra. Now when I've done this to other cars the fittings are never the same so with the Mark III Supra this is the easiest kind of uh, fitting that I no, this is a 10 millimeter hose fitting and this is an M16 by one and a half millimeters. So a banjo bolt here connected to the uh, high pressure line and then the return line here and you're done. Then all you need to do is sort the uh, electrics out. This is your main uh, power. This is naturally the uh, ground and this can be connected to your battery the whole time. It doesn't power the pump itself. The uh, ba This power steering module has a small computer in it and when it gets the right signal here which is only coming from the uh, ignition or 
or the uh, when you turn the key to on when it gets 12 volts here the pump starts automatically and runs on consistent uh, RPMs creating you enough power to run your power steering. So with a system like this, the electrical power steering pump, you can get rid of all the uh, unnecessary things that you might have in your engine bay. For instance, the, uh, naturally you're going to get rid of the, uh, the whole pump itself. You're not going to need that one anymore. The lines that go under the engine in uh, stock form on a 7M, you're not going to need those. You can get rid of all these uh, cooling thingies cooling rivets that you have in the front of the engine and then naturally you can get get rid of this uh, this bracket and the power steering uh, reservoir so what's not to like and this is the final uh, installation of this pump from another car so as you can see the hydraulic line is fitted with a banjo bolt the uh, return line is only a uh, regular hose with just a spring clamp the uh, pump itself it's just filled from this neck here you can see the max and minimum this is the bracket that I was telling you about that holds the pump so very easy solution now what I have in this car already installed with this kind of pump is a uh, adjusting knob to hold whatever uh, kind of pressure I want so that it doesn't hold consistent power at all times and it doesn't change either with the uh, with the uh, with the speed of the car so when it comes to uh, wiring this whole uh, electric power steering pump you can wire it so that it turns on it immediately when you turn on the ignition that's one way but I've hooked mine on so that you can uh, close it whenever you want because in a track car like this one you might uh, wanna switch off any hydraulic pump while you're still running so that you have total control of the whole unit and then also I have a knob here to adjust how much the pressure is gonna be from the pump so there are there are two switches here and one is for the electric pump and as you can hear I'll, I'll click it on here that's when it starts it runs on consistent power and now the knob tells it to because uh, the knob is turned completely counterclockwise tells it to slow down and that's the lowest revs you're gonna know, hear from this pump and as you can see I don't have the engine on but I still have power steering and I can tell you that even with the lowest setting this is still rather easy to control now when I put more power there you're gonna hear the hear it ramp up see now it's spinning at full speed and I can tell you this is easy doesn't have any lag or anything it's really snappy and let's say that the I'm running on hot engine and the uh, some kind of electrical problem or something occurs or the hydraulic line starts leaking I can still drive but turn the pump off so I'd say that's a pretty good advantage of this kind of pump with a regular pump if it uh, starts to malfunction on a, on a street or on the track you cannot just turn it off but this one you can and the noise when you hear it like this it might sound uh, a bit annoying maybe but when you're driving the uh, the, the driving noises the, the tire noises or anything the exhaust and everything it pretty much balances that out and now there are two kind of systems or three kind of systems exactly how to control this kind of electrical pump one way is to just naturally let it be on consistent power to give it the uh, the signal from the ignition to power on and don't have any kind of adjusting for it and I know many people run it like that 
Then the other way is to get one of these sets that controls the uh, RPMs through a, uh, a uh, potentiometer, so that's a adjustable knob. Then there's a GPS system, and I know that some kind of, uh, at least some uh, aftermarket ECUs also can control this kind of uh, power steering pump. Uh, power steering pump for say max ECU can handle this kind of pump pretty easily. So once you decide that you want to switch your whole power steering system to an electrical one like this, it's pretty easy and especially if you have a Mark III Supra. Thank you for watching. Bye.